Greetings, BookTube, and greetings, YouTubers. Welcome to my channel, Michael Romeo Talks Books. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad to have my subscribers back, and I'm glad to have my new people just showing up for the first time, and anybody who falls in between those two extremes. So, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's real easy. It doesn't cost a thing. And I'll let you know when I post new material. And um, today, I am talking about rereading. Uh, last month, there was a lot of posting about rereading. And I decided I was going to weigh in on it. And I watched um, some of the others to see what had been posted. And... After watching a handful, I realized there was nothing I could say that would add to the conversation. Um, it had all been said, uh, one way or another, whether I agreed with it or disagreed with it. Every, everything that I could think of to talk about on the topic of rereading had been said by somebody. And... Um, there was really just no point in regurgitating it. So I said, okay, well, what can I do? Because I really want to talk about rereading. I love rereading. Uh, I'm really a proponent of rereading. So I thought I would just make a quick list of books that I want to reread. And discuss them and why I want to reread them. Um, no surprise... Every one of the books on this list is a 20th century novel. Um, those of you who follow me, you know that, that the 20th century fiction library is my passion. Um, I love the books of the 20th century. I think it was the most um, prolific and um, most entertaining array of books from everything from literature to light entertainment it and it, it's there's just so much good stuff i'm not saying every book that ever came out in the 20th century is good but there's lots to choose from and just there's just so much richness in the variety so some of the books that I want to reread um, for one reason or another. Uh, the first one is 1948's The Young Lions by Erwin Shaw. I love this book. It was so good. Um, it's about World War II and focuses on some, just the handful of characters. Um, three of them are uh, Americans who go over to fight World War II, and the, there's another character that is uh, focused on that is a German, German uh, officer. And it, it follows these four men through the trials of military life and waging war and um, touches on a lot of topics, all of which um, tend to be on the anti-war and anti-military side of the fence. Um, I am not a big, I am not a fan of war, and, um, I, when I find a book that, that beautifully reflects why war is such a waste of effort, and such a waste of manpower, and such a waste of lives, um, 
I just, I just, I latch on to it and, and just, I, I enjoy is probably not the right word to use, um, but I get involved, I get engaged, I get absorbed in the discussion and the young lions is quite a discussion. Um, it's, it's, some of it is very difficult to read because of the topics that it approaches and um, just the, the, the writing of the characters that they're, they're so real that they're, they're people you know they're people you want to spend more time with hence rereading uh, so that's the first one. The second one on my list, and these are not in a list of favorites or anything. This is just a list I jotted down. Uh, 1951, From Here uh, from here to Eternity by James Jones. Very similar to The Young Lions. Um, this one's set uh, in, in um, Hawaii and um, focusing on... Uh, again, several characters and their lives in the military and the pending World, World War II. And again, we, we just have such a richness of characterization in this novel. Um, and... and It's another book that just totally absorbed me that um, I wanted to know more about these people. I wanted to, to walk through their lives with them because the writing was so richly done. Um, and um, I think you'll find if you haven't picked up on it already. Okay, you Hey, we're filming here. We don't need to alert about the kitties on the board. Okay? Doby. Doby. Hey. Hey. That's enough. Okay. So, that's Toby's opinion about it. Well, he's going to bark until the cat goes away. So, we'll just talk over him. I'll talk a little louder. Okay? Um, so, from here, from here to eternity... Um, not sure where I was on this, but, uh, um, yeah, the characters, it just, it comes down to characters, that's what I was getting ready to say, is you'll find, if you haven't already, that, uh, strong characters, richly written characters, is something that, that will... And, 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 and it hook me into a book uh, very successfully. Um, and of course, it has to have a good story, and they, these people have to be doing things that I'm interested in them doing. But yeah, characterization for me is is a very strong proponent of books and why I like them. Okay. All right. Come on. Come on. Oh, okay, that's enough. Calm down. Okay, moving on. Um, 1976, Trinity by Leon Uris. Um, I've already read this book three times. And I will read it again. It is a brilliant novel um, set in Ireland. And it starts with the beginning of the potato famine, which was such an impactful event on that entire country, um, and follows it through to the start of the Irish Revolution, when um, the Irish started trying to get the English out, and um, Again, we have characters that are just 
you want to know these people. You you want to be a part of their lives. Um, and the the writing again is so rich. Is just a word I've got to keep using, and uh, I promise I'll try not to use it again on any of the other books. I've used it on three so far. Um, But it places you in Ireland in the 19th century and makes it so real. You are there with these people. You are fighting with these people, um, surviving with these people. Uh, it, it is by far Leon Uris' best book. Um, I haven't read all, all of his books yet, but of the ones I've read, it is definitely his best. I would be very surprised if I come across another one that is uh, as good or better. Uh, that would be a delight if I do. Absolute delight, but um, I can't imagine him topping this one. And then an old standby from 1925, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. You either love it or you hate it. And I'm uh, one of those who loves it. Um, again, I get wrapped up in the characters and their lives. And um, I, I root for Gatsby when he's trying to win Daisy back. And, um, and Nick Carraway, the narrator, is... Such a wonderful reporter of what's going on, of what he's experiencing, what he's seeing, what he's witnessing among uh, these other people. Um, and he gets caught up in all that's happening in these other people's lives. And they, the, the events and the people change who he is from the beginning of the book to the end. Um, he, he's a changed person because of what what he experiences from Jay Gatsby, from Daisy Buchanan. Um, I can't remember the, the name of the, the, the garage owner and his wife and um, and it's not a thick book. It's a quick read. It's a boot. Um, and again, it's either you love it or you hate it. I've never heard anybody say, yeah, it's an alright book. It's either, oh, I love The Great Gatsby, or, oh my god, how do you, how do you read that stuff? Um, so, um, it's, it's very similar to Catcher in the Rye in, in that respect. I'm one of those who would just absolutely hated Catcher in the Rye, but there are people who champion that book, and it meant so much to them. Um, Gatsby's another one of those books. There's, there's no gray zone in the middle. It's either white or black. Um, and if you haven't read, read it, I hope you give it a shot, because you should at least give it a shot. And... Uh, let me know if you read it. Let me know what you think of what what you think about it. Um, then we go to 1918, My Antonia by Willa Cather, another book I've read. I have got to have read it half a dozen times. Um, first read it when I was about 12 years old, and just fell in love with Antonia. Um, the the young main character whose name I'm forgetting I just got off a night shift so the brain is not firing on all cylinders at the moment um, but he he falls in love with Antonia too and I fell in love with her right right along with him I've read this book like I said half a dozen times and every time I read it I get more out of it I I see it from a different perspective as I age. And I have more life experiences. I see different things in the book. Because um, uh, Antonia and the main character, whose name I'm drawing a blank on, um, 
they grow through the course of the book. They start out as children and are adults by the end of the book. And so it's no surprise that when you read it more than one time, this is, this is another um, positive proponent of um, component, I should say, another positive component of rereading a book is that if it's a really good, richly written book, you won't get it all the first time you read it. You, you, because you're discovering it, you, and you're um, almost overwhelmed with the with the good writing, with the with the characters, with the place and the time. And uh, when you go back and you read it again. Um, you pick up on stuff that you didn't see the first time because you were you were learning it, and then you go back and you read it a third time, and there's even more stuff that you find out because the other stuff now is familiar, and you go, oh, I didn't pick up on that before. I didn't, I don't, I didn't see that aspect. I didn't get that theme that was hiding in there. Um, so it's just another good reason to, to read a book more than one, one time. If it's, if it's a book you really like, if it's, if the book is a dog, of course you, you don't want to. I'm sorry, kids. I just said that, didn't I? As if the dog was a bad thing. Um, uh, of course you're not going to want to go back and reread it if it's a bad book, but, but you get what I'm saying. I hope. In 1982, um, James A. Mishner gave us Space, uh, another one I've read more than once already, and I'll read again. Uh, fun book. Uh, uh, it's a fictionalized account of the race for uh, to, to be the first in space and to... Um, be the first people who go and, and explore outside of our atmosphere, what's out there. Um, fictionalized, yes, but based on real accounts, um, real events. And Mishner is a very detailed writer and meticulously researched his books are always meticulously researched and um this is this is one that like all his others um he manages to take a place or or um an item or something and makes that the character that that is the main character in this case space is the main character and everybody else is the supporting cast. Um, when he wrote The Source, um, Judaism and Israel were the main characters. And the people were just there to help tell the story. Um, that's just the way, way he writes. And he, he um, really rediscovered how to, not rediscovered, um, we came up with a new way to write historical fiction and, um, his, his books are engaging, enriching. Um, I've got space here as one I want to read again, yet again. Um, there's a whole bunch of his books I could have put down because... He is such a brilliant writer. Um, but Space is the one I chose to represent the larger body of work. Uh, 1987, Robert McCayman gave a swan song. Um, I know people love um, The Stand. Uh, I have tried reading The Stand half a dozen times and I get further every time but I've never been able to finish it um, but Swan Song which came out around the same time as The Stand is on 
the same type of themes. Um, the final battle between good and evil. Um, and it's it's an edge of the sea. I, it, Robert McCayman wrote horror novels uh, mostly at this point in his career. He's going on to do much more varieties of, of um, fiction. Um, and I think this was one of them where he started to break away from the typical horror story. And um, this is more sci-fi, dystopian. Um, um atmosphere to the book and uh again great characters i i love characters what can i say that they're, they're the reason i read meeting people <laughs> it's like it's like meeting people like you're really meeting other people you can almost reach into the page and shake the hand um when it's written right uh but robert mccain and Swan Song is a brilliant novel, and it's one I read a long time ago, and I want to reread it again just to, to rediscover it, because it has been so long since I fir first read it that um, it would be a rediscovery. Um, and then 1976, Interview with the Vampire, Anne Rice. Again, another one that I've already read more than once, and I'll read it again. Um, the only word I can, can come up with to describe Interview with a Vampire is romantic. And I don't mean that in the sense of um, a couple falls in love and they have romance. No, it's... it's it's a romanticized view of vampires and what it means to be immortal and um, the good and the bad that comes with it. And uh, just it's an exploration of so many themes. Um, the meaning of life, the, the, um, the impact of immortality, should it actually be something that somebody obtains, what, what that means. And, um, Anne Rice created some of the most vivid characters ever put on the page when she wrote Interview with the Vampire. Um, Oddly enough, I have not gone on to read more of the series. Well, I read the second one, The Vampire List That, uh, which was almost as good. Um, and it's on my list to start with Interview with the Vampire and work my way through the Vampire Chronicles. Um, and I will do that someday, I trust. Uh, 1968. Arthur Hate, that crash you just heard was cats. Cats are such unique animals. I'll just leave that there. 1968, Airport by Arthur Haley. Um, great suspense novel. Um, but while it's a suspense novel, it's also an exploration of the airline industry. And um, we've got a major blizzard in, in Chicago and the airport is trying to continue to operate, uh, trying to keep the runways clear so the planes can take, in, take off and land. And um, because of the weather, of course, there are many, many challenges that they're having to face. Oh. And you okay? And one of the challenges they really just don't expect is having a plane with a bomb on it. Um, you know, just why not? You know, having a bad enough day as it is, why not to have somebody bring a bomb on a plane? Um, so 
the suspense is very tautly written. Um, and again, the characters, the characters, you gotta love the characters in it. Um, then one that I am still currently reading, and I put it on the list because I know I'm going to want to read this book again because it is so deep. It is so uh, multi-layered and has so many themes in it that there is no way you can read this book one time and just and get everything out of it that there is to get out of it. And that is 1990's The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. Um, it was a runner-up for the um, Pulitzer Prize in 1991. Uh, he got beat out by John Updike. And um, I haven't read the Updike book, but I still have to say what I've read so far. I'm... I'm like 80% of the way through the book. Um, I think Tim O'Brien got shortchanged because this is such an incredible book and makes you think about so many different issues and explore themes that your leagues don't always have answers. Um, sometimes you can't explain everything in life. You just can't. And when you're in a situation like the Vietnam War, which was such a senseless war, um, you, you just, you, you just have stuff that's unresolved. And he has his characters addressing these situations and never getting to put a paid stamp on some things because it was just, how, how do you take chaos and make it make sense? And how do you live through the chaos and and come out of it a changed person because there is no way you're going to be a part of a conflict like the Vietnam War and come out the same person you went in. Um, and he captures that. He captures that, that, uh, that just that, that sense of incompleteness that, that happens in any way. I'm not going to go further on that because uh, I'm going to do a full review on it when I finish it, which will probably be very soon, next day or two. Um, and then on here, I have also added 1966. Um, I know some people have um, chuckled at me because I list this as one of my favorite books, uh, and that is Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne. Fun book absolutely fun book about um some women in the 1940s who are trying to make it make careers with themselves to begin with remember this is the 1940s okay after world war ii um women were still pretty much expected to um keep the, the, the prescribed roles for women. Um, you know, you, you, your purpose is to get, to grow up, get married, have babies, take care of hearth and home. Um, but World War Two put women into the workplace because all the men were out fighting. And we still needed industries that had, that had to run. Um, so Rosie the Riveter, you know, women became welders. Women became so many things that only men had done before. And now they're being told to go back to 
to being just basically a support system for men. And um, in this book, Valley of the Dolls, we've got some women who decided, no, they want a career and they want it in show business. Um, and it's different aspects of show business too. Um, we've got um, a model, we've got an, an actress, singer, um, that was the characters based on Judy Garland. Uh, we got a woman who just wants to have a career working in the administrative area of um, of the entertainment industry, and um, it's not an easy row. It was not an easy row for for women at that time. It's and you know even today, uh, it is still not completely. Um, changed over women still hit the glass ceiling and they they still get um short changed so much in the workplace especially when they get into the professional areas that have been dominated by men for so many years um and I know I went off on tangents here, but yeah, The Valley of the Dolls, though it was considered a very trashy book, though it was considered a very cheap book, um, addresses these issues. And um, the women in it are strong women. They want something different out of their lives. And uh, following them through that, journey is I found it to be very entertaining very riveting very um, very fun it was just a, a good fun read and yes I will read it again um, again because I know this stuff I, I missed the first time around because I was discovering the book and now that um, I've read the book, uh, now that I've read all of these books, it's time to go back and find out what else is there that I didn't see because, because I was just discovering on this layer while I read. And now I go in and while I still have that layer in place, I'm learning about this layer too. Um, more sub themes, more um, more points of view, more more, and that's why you reread. It's because it's more, and uh, and this is just a brief list. I could have gone on with this list. This video is now over 30 minutes, and I've just been running off at the mouth. Can you imagine if I made this book list longer? Um, but again, so much was said on rereading pro and con uh, by the people who posted videos about it. Um, two that I particularly liked uh, were Kim at Middle of the Book March. And, <clears throat> excuse me and uh, Michael K. Vaughan um, wrote this some, some very good discussions on, on rereading um, and other people as well. And um, it's just, you know, I, I, I wonder sometimes when people say they don't like rereading, it's, life is too short to reread a book when there's so many other books out there that you haven't read at all. Um, but yet, do you watch a movie more than once if you really, really like it? Do you watch a TV show more than once if you really, really liked it? Um, do you listen to music more than once because you really, really liked it? Why not encounter a book again 
and and just let yourself become even more immersed than you were the first time. Um, now there are times that rereading backfires. Um, I decided I wanted to reread the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon because a new book had come out and I had it, it, it was a long time coming. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to reread the whole series, start at the beginning and go through again. And that was one that rereading didn't work because um, the strength of that series is the surprises in it. Um, she's constantly throwing in unexpected stuff that happens to the characters and their adventures and big adventures and little adventures and there's always something waiting around the corner. And you go through these books just wondering what is going to happen next. Well, when you reread it, there are no surprises anymore. Um, there may be stuff that, you know, like with other rereads that um, you didn't catch the first time, but but on the big, big scale, um, those surprises are gone. And that was the book's momentum. Um, the characters, as it turns out, were mildly entertaining characters. Um, the basic plot was a mildly entertaining basic plot. But the surprises and the, the momentum that she achieved by constantly having something new every chapter coming up um, that when you go back and you reread it, then it's just an average book. And uh, I only got through the first two. I started the third one and just went, no, just it's, this is not a rereadable one. So there are books out there that you don't want to reread. And I will 100% back people up on that. But there are books to reread. And if you don't believe me, if you've never reread a book in your life, pick one. Pick a book you really love. And sit down and start it. Start rereading it. And experience this time spent with old friends. Um, experience this traveling again to a favorite destination, um, going back to a different era that, that you, you, you enjoyed the first time around. It is, it really is a gift. It's, um, it's a gift we have as readers, um, to be able to do this and I think it's worth taking advantage of that. And I'm now at almost 40 minutes and I usually try to keep my videos under 20 minutes because I know. So for some reason, my phone decided it didn't want me talking anymore. And it stopped. And so I guess that's my sign to sign off. I don't understand why I did that, but it did. So I'm going to bid adieu on this subject. Reread a book. Try it. If you've never done it before, give it a shot. In the comments down below, let me know what ones you love to reread. Um, and even if you've never reread a book, think about it. What one would you, if you did decide to do it, would you try it out on? Let me know in the comments. Have you read any of the books that I've talked about here? And what did you think of them? Worthy of rereading or not? Um, I could have talked about Shogun and other James Clavell books. I could have talked about um, My Old True Love by Sheila K. Adams. I could have talked about so many other books. Um, 
but I kept the list short ish. I just kept running off at the mouth. So <laughs> my phone's already told me once that I need to shut up and move on. Um, so we'll just call it a day. And um, again, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Reread, reread a book. Bye.